Lucy and Pat are now Mr. and Mrs. Patrick John Nugent. The president formally surrendered his daughter to her new husband less than an hour ago at the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. And the marriage ceremony itself ended at 1242 Eastern Daylight Company. Since then, the newly married couple have been participating in a high nuptial mass. It has been a colorful, splendid, even magnificent occasion. Although in today's midday temperature, some of the formally dressed members of the wedding party may be glad it's over. Still, it's an occasion no one will forget. dances to be danced, and cake to be either eaten or slept on. Now that choice will depend on the degree of your hunger and or sentimentality. But the day that we're calling Lucy's day is far from over. We had a, a couple of tips about what had happened during the ceremony with Carpenter. Mrs. Johnson's secretary ran downstairs and said that when Lucy and her father walked down the aisle and he surrendered her to Pat, she turned around uh, to her father and gave him a little You mean not a little pat, but a little pat on the cheek. You're paying attention, and I'm proud of you. <laughs> when they were uh, standing for the ceremony, or just before the ceremony, uh, Lucy was, was so nervous that she was visibly shaking. And she had held her little fine chin out, though, and she was looking up at the magnificent mosaic of Christ. Uh, Pat was so moved that it, he took out a handkerchief and wiped away some real tears during the ceremony. And then also Bob very light, two of them, I think, when it came time for their response, Pat could hardly be heard. His voice, in fact, couldn't be very sincere with me. But Lucy's voice came through loud and clear. Isn't that usually the way, as I recall, most of the weddings I've attended, the, uh, the woman somehow manages to get the words out beautifully, and the man seems to be somewhat, well, I don't want to say reluctant, but he's quiet about the whole thing. It's just what we've been saying all along. It's Lucy's day. <laughs> Betty, during the near frantic activities of the past week, Lucy and Pat did manage to squeeze in time for an interview. Let's listen to it. Lucy, I think you said at one time or another that this was not love at first sight. Uh, could you tell us what did happen on that first sight or first I date? I don't mean that in a derogatory way. But uh, the situation was so difficult, I can't imagine it. Uh, under okay, why? Well, yes, we give him a friend. Uh, 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 yes, we give him a friend. Uh, Ostrich Hill Review and Steve Reeves. Uh, you know the big one, Steve Reeves. Well, he sure wishes he could. Yeah. It was a very, well, I really uh, think he's busy weekend, very hurried weekend, and so uh, we either got along and very other easily, people, and he's very got fun, and and he's very fun, 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 and has that been a problem for you? Well, for instance, the traditional asking for a girl's hand, how does that go when you have to ask the president? It was the same as it were for any other girl. It's, uh, it wasn't difficult. I was nervous. I told you I weren't nervous. I'd be lying. Is it <laughs> No, but it went very well. Everything worked out just fine. We were going down to Texas, and uh, there had been reports that we'd gone down there specifically to ask him to talk to him about it. And uh, we uh, had no intention of doing so. And uh, if we had, it would be really, really difficult to do it under the cards. When the whole world was doing we were going to do it, and if everybody else was going to do it, all of us were going to do it. And there was no reason to do it. We were Like a good house, possibly, because it is, it is my first house. 
since the day 30 years ago when he went into the john with a weird ravaging illness. The john is located in an immense motel which stands on the island just off Harry Sam. Only the elite has been inside the john where the important functions of Harry Sam are performed. There's a constant stream of limousines going to and fro from the motel, disembarking judges, generals, the chiefs of crabs, and the Nazarene bishops. The Nazarene bishops are a bunch of drop-dead egalitarians 
crying into the billfolds, we must love one another or die. These luminaries are followed by swathy, swaggering attendants in high black boots, hoods, with slits for eyes, carrying towels, sweet-smelling colognes, lotions, and fancy enema bottles as they waddle up the unfractuous path like penguins in their evening clothes. The three letters eat, blink their rays throughout Harry Sam across the bay. Helicopters spin above the motel like agitated bugs. Two giant valves protrude from the island, flushing filth and refuse into the bay, which separates it from Harry Sam. The bay is so filled with human hair, poisons, muck, and bilge that no swimmer has ever emerged from its waters alive. What do you think about this grand place? Grand? Are you for real? You call this far out grand? Why, the only issue is whether those cats up there in the water closet will get off their big fat rumps and come out. Land, country, man, those cats have been up there in that foul, nasty place for 30 years, dripping feces all over the place, and you got the nerve to talk about land, country, are you off the wall? Why, any cat in his right mind knows that this is a big way out bring down, I said, my voice rising. There are things going on in Harry Sam that will give you the willies. Bat fly into his stomach walls and shit in his brains. There's a horrible screaming inside as funny-looking monsters tramp through testicles searching for food. Enchanted areas where the undead travel around on motorized golf carts and play gazoos and dog bones and where unemployed presidents are giving the people a whole lot of you are my sunshine. Well, I can go on for days. Why, just the other day I saw a man running out of a bar yelling, just like Munich, just like Munich. What the fuck does Munich have to do with anything? <laughs> Harry Sam, my leader. Oh, what are you going to do? I'm so overwhelmed. Call me Sam, kid. This is formalities. You're just as good as me or even better. You know, Chris, he said, just because I've been up here evacuating for 30 years from this really way out bring down illness doesn't mean that I don't know what's going down in me. Why, I look through my binoculars and see everything flying over there and nothing, which is me. Nothing escapes my eyes. I like the way you operate. Here, have one of them pauses what refreshes. Ha, ha, ha. He said, jamming the bottle's neck into my mouth. Now, there's a lot of clamming and beefing going on down there. Some of those dropouts are gripping about me not coming out of the john to hold them in my lap. A man in my position can't be exposing himself in public. I'm not nice to be near. One time we developed a thing what would put down all them smart little spicks. Yeah, this foundation came up with some weapon what would crush them spicks and had them spicks running around giggling and hopping around. Ha, you should have seen them running with their clothes on fire, said Harry Sam slapping his knees. What was that weapon called, Rapunzel, asked Sam of the little man. I think we called it a beneficent incapacitated. <laughs> See, they laugh at me because on the newsreels, my shorts don't fit too good. We think they fit fine, boss. You look like Rock Hudson, of course, said. When well, you're wrong, Sam said. Gravity has gotten the best of me. I'm a little flabby and sick and not pleasant to be near. Senior prom.